you ever wonder what's out there? Over that hill? No! Dork concerned more with where next meal come from. His mate Jessica just died of a splinter. And there's a cave crisis. But there's gotta be more food out there and more caves. Maybe there's even a cure for splinters. No, our problem's here, not over hill. No, I've made up my mind. I'm leaving to go where no man has ever gone before. We as humans are natural explorers. We can debate all day over the righteousness of it or the negatives throughout history, but we can't snuff out that flame of exploration. So why wouldn't we want to go to space, the final frontier? The biggest arguments I've heard are, it's super expensive for the taxpayers, bad for the environment. What's the point? Here at Hubble, we think that going to space is within our best interest. And while we agree with a lot of the arguments against it, we want to present a case for why we certainly should invest in space exploration. And uh, at least one of us said astronaut when an adult asked us what we wanted to be when we grew up. But why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? It's one small step for man. Booster ignition and liftoff of Endeavor. Touchdown confirmed. We're safe on Mars. Go SpaceX. Godspeed. Spot and tag. Uh, you know, I hate to ask, but, uh, can I borrow some rocks for my journey? What I need. Don't worry, don't worry. I I'll pay you back. I mean, I'll probably find more. M might even find some new ones. Well, of course it's super expensive. But exploration is always expensive. It cost millions for nations to cross oceans only several hundred years ago. But even now, it can still be quite expensive, especially when they get stuck. That massive container ship still stuck, blocking traffic in both directions. Nearly 300 million pounds worth every single hour. But according to NASA, space pays. There's gotta be some return on the investment, right? Well, in 1989, the Chapman Report showed 259 non-space applications of NASA technology between 1976 and 1984, and found more with 21 billion in sales and benefits, 325,000 jobs created, and more than 365 million in federal income tax. And we wouldn't have intercontinental ballistic missiles without our space program now, would we? Wait. We wouldn't have camera phones or laptops, insulation, CAT scans, LEDs, water purification systems, wireless headsets, or even baby formula if it weren't for the research done at NASA. All the technology that allows us to predict the weather, too. Remember that one? On top of that, we are running out of precious resources to make PlayStations and graphics cards. But seriously, Computers are constantly becoming more and more powerful and necessary, and there's only so much of the seafloor for us to scrape to get such resources. The moon and Mars and asteroids have a ton of valuable resources that we might be able to exploit without compromising the sanctity of our habitats here on Earth. Right, right, it's expensive because space is a harsh environment, the harshest, but it drives technology. There are resources out there that could help us. But shouldn't we be spending money on solving our myriad problems down here? Mightn't it be a better use of tax dollars or the money of billionaires? I want to thank uh, every Amazon employee and every Amazon customer, because you guys paid for all of this. I mean, sure, absolutely. Most definitely, but I don't think that I need to remind anyone that a whole lot of money went to bailing out banks. It was the worst day on Wall Street since the crash of 1987. Or the trillions of dollars that go to developing crazy new ways of killing people. My point is that it's just a bit too naive and idealistic to assume that just because we don't fund one thing, we'll solve other problems. But you can't leave. Remember when your Uncle Ernest go, he'd trigger big freezy time. It's called 
An ice age. You moron. But wait, Graham, it's bad for the environment. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's like everything we do is bad for the environment. We cannot really exist without being bad for the environment unless we want to go back to being hunter-gatherers. And I'm really sorry, but I can't do that. I like the modern amenities like plumbing and roofs. The moment you go higher and higher, there's less mixing between the layers. Uh, the fact that you uh, put the pollution in the higher layers of the atmosphere makes it more difficult uh, to, to contract. Because you can make sustainable fuels, you can just take CO2 out of the air, but still you take the CO2 out of the lower layer of the atmosphere and you put it back in the higher layers of the atmosphere. And there is less or no mixing uh, anymore, so it stays there forever, or at least a decade or a century or more. So, short answer, yeah, duh, it's bad for the environment. How could it not be? We're setting fire to a whole shed load of fuel to send a bunch of metal up into space. But if we make a comparison to, say, commercial flights, then maybe it won't seem nearly as bad. In 2018, the airline industry put out about 918 million tons of CO2 into the atmosphere to space flights 22,780 tons. And that's roughly 37,800,000 flights compared to the 114 rocket launches that took place in 2018. On top of that, there are so many more CO2 emitting industries that could be taken into account. I hear you. Adding to the problem, but only less, does not absolve anything, and a what about argument isn't a particularly strong one. In the end, it's more that flights are a constant while rockets blow their load all at once, to put it crudely. Well, that means we have to, to be careful. Uh, don't uh, use space just for fun, uh, uh, because you want to go there. Use it with a purpose, uh, I would say. Uh, and then you can, can more or less defend the fact that you pollute the, uh, that part of the atmosphere. Keep it restrained, uh, keep it within certain boundaries, uh, and then you can make use, useful use of space uh, for the, yeah, the benefit of mankind. We should also consider the steps that companies are taking to make spaceflight more sustainable, such as the reusable rockets that SpaceX has been using. But in the future, maybe we could find some new methods of propelling ourselves into the cosmos, like a Hastel or hypersonic airplane space tether orbital launch, which aside from sounding so cool, means a plane flies a payload up and a tether catches it and then pulls it into space. Or the space elevator with a counterweight out in space that maintains the tautness of a cable, and then we can just send stuff up into space. There are so many more with equally awesome sounding names like the Space Gun or Ram Accelerator or the Slingatron. Maybe one day we could even use electromagnetic acceleration. So rocket launches definitely put a lot of contaminants into the atmosphere, but it seems slightly disingenuous to say that it's any worse than the things we already use and take for granted. But in the future, we will have to develop new methods of propelling ourselves to the stars. And these discoveries could lead to new and more efficient technologies for us to use down here on Earth. Hey, now don't forget all the nice things that Uncle Ernie brought back. I mean, where would we be without all the sharp rocks? And he taught us to tame the yellow demon. And have you seen his cave paintings? The finger work is exquisite. We were fine without. But what even is the point then? I mean, we're going to boil to death anyway, and we can't even solve our own problems. Why not just go out peacefully in a nihilistic blaze of glory? Well, we can't really deny that we were born to explore. We're naturally curious. We need more space for our ever-growing population, or even just for the resources that we are fracking out of our planet. We can start mining the moon or passing asteroids. Besides, traveling to space has always been one of the most difficult tasks and has propelled the pace of technological advancement. I choose to go over the hill this decade and to do the other things. 
I choose to do this not because they are easy, but because they are hard. This could also be the next step in the evolution of our species. I mean, tall people like me will be out of date. And in anyone that I ever made fun of for being short can throw me the finger as they sail off into the cosmos to start their new lives elsewhere, like on the moons of Jupiter. Cut it out! Yuri Gagarin, the first astronaut, the cosmonaut, you could call him, uh, when he was uh, navigating, circumnavigating our globe, uh, he was asked, how do the stars look? And he replied, by the Earth is beautiful. Uh, so how to change the perspective on, on Earth, I think that's very important uh, because we have to be aware of the you know, how fragile our Earth is uh, and then watch it closely. And having that space perspective really, really helps uh, there. And that is a very strong motivator uh, to do even more our best uh, to preserve this Earth. Uh. The point is, that this could help us solve problems down here. New ways to combat the climate crisis, make our current tools more efficient, drive innovation with newer and more difficult problems to overcome. And that's the point, learning more about the nature of the universe and maybe finally figuring out the meaning of life. It's 42, right? Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you think they should shoot my dumb ass out into space or just tell me what your opinion is in the comments. That might be a bit more cost-effective. See you next week.